Greetings and salutations, one and all. Welcome to another fantastic week of Olympus Rises. This week is episode number eight, and I hope you all will enjoy it just as much as we enjoyed playing it. Uh, or we will enjoy playing it, I should say. I should use present tense, because this is live for a studio audience. And by studio, I mean they're sitting on a train or in their apartment or their house on their TV somewhere where they can access and see us live play this wonderful wonderful game we call stars without number so uh we are waiting for our brit uh who assured me and i quote haha don't worry i'll make sure i'm here tonight yeah i think he sent me at 9 a.m exactly about 10 hours ago Eight hours ago. There you go. That's what we're doing. But in the meantime, we can check in with all the rest of our players and see how they're doing and make sure everything is going well with them while I get things arranged. So, without further ado. Also, congrats, by the way, Devin. Thank you. <laughs> Is it just me, or, or is Megan super quiet? Hello? Yeah, am I super quiet? Hello? Hi? Do I need to turn stuff up? I've, I've already got you at max user volume, I guess. But you oh, seem quiet really? to me, but it... Hello? I have her at 43%. Hi, hello? I have her at 140. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> so I, I don't know what to do 200. with that. <laughs> <laughs> It's very strange because on my end I try and balance everybody like as much as I can. Mm -hmm. He's at thirty-eight, and Matt is at twenty-two. Why? Why is that? Because your microphone is so loud. Oh, oh. I'll attest to that. Fuck. Well, I mean, I've I've got you at 150 percent, but everyone else is at 200. I have you at 34 percent, Matt. What the fuck? That but you must... sound great at 34 percent. Yeah, no, you sound great at 22 percent. It's fantastic. Yeah, and it's a great mic, so mm -hmm. keep it up. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> I like it, it, the, balancing my mic and trying to keep that acceptable is just a ongoing point of vexation for me well, if it's Audio any issues are always a problem. if it's any consolation matt uh you've been that low forever yeah so like mm. your mic has been perfectly balanced <laughs> i just have always had you at like n zero percentage like n negative yeah 22 <laughs> percent of your normal normal volume you just you understand what i say to you with the the like negative space that's yeah. created by reversing <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah. All of that is correct um so as you all can see it looks like we're, we're missing will even though even though i he I, promised i specifically he broke he a promise fucking promised he fucking I, promised the promise I has been broken the trust is real specifically received that message today that he would I'll be sure I'm here tonight, is the exact quote. Well, we'll see if tonight means within the next 23 minutes or not. Yeah. He's usually pretty good at showing up during recap. True. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'm just going to change my name so that I appear as if I am, as if I am he. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Twitch also thinks you're playing Divinity still. Uh, yeah, so... All of a sudden, it was like 10 till. So I just oh. clicked the start button before I actually filled in uh, all the things. If fixed, you were, yeah. yeah, if you refresh, it should be. It'll fix it. Yeah. Should be Gucci. Um, but yeah, hi, hello, everyone. Uh, we. Wait. Yes, we've had a couple of weeks off. Um, it's, it's hard. God, let me tell you before we get started, it is fucking brutal to try and keep track of all three games and when they play because they're spaced <laughs> out just enough that it's not always the same weeks off that i have for each game uh specifically this one 
is different from all of the others because all the others are like Thursday, Friday. So usually if you can't play on Thursday. You can't play on Fridays for whatever reason. Um, but this one being oh, even just a day apart, I just forget all the time when I'm supposed to have games and not really do something about that, like have a calendar. But mm, meh. Uh, but without further ado, Devin. Yes. Hello. Hello. Tell us all about what you've been doing for the past couple of weeks, because I anticipate it will be more than the three of us combined. Well, I mean, you were part of one of them, so... True, not. but again, still more than the three of us combined. Yeah. I was so, a very uh, small portion of that. I got married. Hooray! Yay! Congratulations! Yay! Um... That was and cool. with that, the dreams of hundreds of women die. Devin's a very attractive <laughs> dude, so Devin actually, yes. taken off the market. Emmy, his, his his wife knew exactly wife. what she was doing, and locked that shit down early. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you. So, because I would have considered it if she didn't. I'm just throwing that out there. You you would have had to fight a couple of other guys, but I know. Um, Jesus but Christ. had a lot of fun. That was it was a fun party wedding thing. And then uh, two days later, three days later, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday morning, Monday, Monday morning, opened up an envelope and found out I was going to Boston for my honeymoon. Yay! 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 <laughs> and, Wait, uh, what? Why was that again? Uh, because I did a service called Pack Up and Go where they book your vacation. Yeah, you don't get to know what your vacation is until, like, the day before you leave. Mm -hmm. And they sent you to Boston in December? Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because that's the same guy that TS or that's the same thing the TSA guy said. He said, you know, you know you're in Boston in December, right? <laughs> and I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I quit <laughs> service. But no, it was it was actually really fun. Um, we were there for four days. Got in Monday morning around eleven. Uh, stayed till Thursday night. Well, Thursday afternoon, four o'clock ish. Um, I was only there for four days, but I can I can say with with pretty good certainty that I've had the best cannoli in Boston. Yes. Um, <laughs> which was at Mike's Pastries. I've had probably the best pizza in Boston, which is at Regina's. I and mean, clearly you were in the North End. Clearly you yeah. got the full North End experience. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I probably had the best cheesecake I've ever had in my life. Like, holy shit, this cheesecake was insane. Where? Uh, Toronto. It's like a uh, Peruvian-Italian place. Yeah, I've never been there, but I know several people who have gone if and say it's, uh, it's like freaking nuts. Yeah, if it's one thing that pops into my mind when I think of Peruvian cuisine, <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. cheesecake. See, so yeah, that's, that's one hundred percent. Also, just Peruvian Italian, like that's just a really weird mix. Like who who did that? But uh, they actually send their chefs to Peru and to Italy to learn how to cook both cuisines in those countries do they serve guinea pig no because uh, we had an know. undergrad that went and spent like a semester abroad down there and she was like yep ate a couple <laughs> yeah wow but the, the food was amazing um and the cheesecake came with it was like cheesecake but then the cheesecake itself was ridiculous but then on top of it they put like a like a corn syrup, so it's super like a sweet stuff, but mixed in with the corn syrup was like cinnamon and some some other spice like nutmeg or something. I don't know. I couldn't tell you for sure. Um, and then they put candied pecans on top. It it was insane. Hmm. Sounds incredible. Yep. Yep. Had a good time. Uh, did the Freedom Trail. That was fun. Went and took a couple of pictures on Acorn Street. Saw the Boston Public Library. Um, had some clam chowder. <laughs> uh, Lol. 
<laughs> like that's to... that's one of the few things. Like you you can't say clam chowder. You you, you can't. It just doesn't sound right. Because right. speaking proper English would be terrible. L- yeah. Listen, Meg and I are are from Me there, too. and you can in <laughs> fact just say chowder. <laughs> well, I mean, it's harder though. It's easier to say chowder. Did you did you see Fenway? I'm sorry. Did you go to Fenway? Uh no, no, we didn't make it out there. Uh, <clears throat> we packed a lot of stuff into four days. Yeah, that's but I true. didn't feel super rushed or anything like that, so that was good. And then my last day there, like seriously, within like eight hours, I got sick, like dying sick. So that was fun. And mm-hmm. then I flew home with a head full of disgusting this. And uh, I'm recovering Dude, every, now. Everyone on the plane loved you, I bet. Well, I I was taking like everything under the sun to control every symptom possible, so I don't think too many people knew I was sick. Were you just unconscious the whole time, basically? I I yes, but I wasn't unconscious. Mm, I right. was just there. Right, like, right. I was existing. Okay. You were you were experiencing an out of body experience the entire time that you were on the plane. Yeah, gotcha. except in my body because it was too unbearable to leave. Right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, other than that, it was it was fun. Had a good time. For some reason, I sat in a park and ate an Italian sandwich in like thirty eight degree weather. Because, Sounds fine to me. I mean, yeah, yeah. I see nothing wrong with this. But uh, no, had a good time. So. Well, it was a hundred in Florida the other day. Good lord. Was it really? Oh yeah, oh no, I, I guess you guys didn't get the picture because I just sent you the siege. Sent you the picture, I went down to get in my car. And it was on my day off, so I didn't quite realize how warm it was. It was warm, but I mean like it's... Devin, you know what I'm talking about, like... Yeah. It's fucking Florida, it's always warm. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, by the way, 100 is warm, in case, in case that was confusing to anyone. No, at this point I... I... No, just not to question. Uh, me. A lot of pictures up. Well, it's like when you say 40 is chilly. Like, no, that's mm-hmm. fucking cold. Right, that's fucking cold. There you go. There's, there's me I've in my car. I probably never said 40 is chilly. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's, there's me in my car. You gotta be at least below Three freezing degrees. for it to be chilly. Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. 32 is the benchmark, really. Well, well, I can, I can attest. We were playing a game the whole time we were there, uh, trying to spot the person with the least amount of clothes. Um, and anyone in shorts? Was, there was one guy in shorts, but he was wearing a sweater, and then there was another guy in a short sleeve shirt. To be but, fair, that's me most of the time in Florida. Like, if I just need to go somewhere, I'll have shorts on, but I'll like put yeah. a hoodie on. Yeah, but it's also not like twenty eight degrees. Right, but it's not twenty something. Well, did you yes. see people in flip flops? Because there's always usually at least a couple. A handful um, of all work uh, New Englanders that still in flip flops. Uh, I saw one person in sandals, but they were wearing socks. <laughs> um, but then we went down to uh to Harvard and walked around there, and and you took a, a mishmash of everything. Probably people drunk walking places that didn't care whether it was cold or not. Fair. Uh, well, that's fantastic. Uh, I guess we move on to, I would love to move on to, to Will. Abandon us. All hope is lost for him forever. <laughs> uh, Megan, hello. Hi, hello. <clears throat> Tell us about the past couple of weeks for you. Um, they really haven't been terribly exciting. Um, had a good turkey day. Um, as you know, but maybe the rest don't know, uh, we had two turkeys. One of them was deep fried, which was pretty cool. Never had that before. It's really I really cool. need to make time to get back home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> all these developments. Uh huh. Um, and what else? Um, school's been interesting. This year's group has some seriously unique challenges um and uh 
had parent teacher conferences on Friday for like six hours and have to have them again this Friday for like six hours. I'm not super looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Not a whole lot to talk about. That's it. That's it. That's all that happened. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> uh, sounds like a, a wonderful Thanksgiving. I didn't have any Thanksgiving. Uh, until a couple of days later when my, um, uh, when my neighbor literally, like, he knocks on my door at, like, nine in the morning, uh, and wakes me up, because, again, it was my day off, and I go over there, and I open the door, and he's just got, uh, a turkey, and two gigantic, like, uh, in, like, industrial size trays, of mashed potatoes and green beans and he's like here i can't eat it all and then i that's just been my life for the past <laughs> week or so um so that's fantastic that's that's been that's been wonderful so i did get some turkey although to be fair uh before the wedding i did have leftovers so i at least got some turkey the day after thanksgiving so that was cool um other than that, I went to a wedding, which was a lot of fun. Uh, as I told everybody in Siege, uh, the food was incredible. I uh, can't believe you guys had all of that and didn't, like, I, I, I don't even understand, like, how that much food gets placed out there uh, and as delicious as it was. You guys definitely chose the right place for sure. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So, other than that being the case um matt hello what's up not much how you been what do you, what's been up it's been a couple weeks we haven't talked really uh it has definitely been a couple of weeks good My i hear life. i hear there was exciting news though the one thing we did talk about there was exciting news which was that you got money. I did get money. I, I submitted. <laughs> like literally, the most money. important thing that you told me about in the past three weeks. I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember if I told you that or not. Man, I think uh, you need sleep. Yeah. So. <laughs> fuck, man. Uh, yeah. Yesterday it was actually the first day in like, in memory that I just didn't do a damn thing. Uh, so yeah, Friday we had, um, I submitted a technique development grant for, um, basically dealing with the stuff that I've been, uh, working on for my dissertation and I'm pretty hopeful about that. And the same day, the same morning I submitted that, I found out that we got funded for a two-year grant to study um, leukodystrophy, which is like a, it's this disease that impacts um, the myelination of neurons and like impacts the, you know, signaling efficiency and it is bad. So it's a bad thing. You don't want to get it. And we got funded for two years to study that and figure out um, if what I'm developing is an efficient way to try and treat it, which is awesome. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that because that was kind of, you know, I'm, I'm one of the primary people that would be funded by that. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. Just Holy myself shit. and throw a bunch of cash uh, on your bed and then jump in it. <laughs> uh, there are very specific guidelines for how that funding has to be uh, spent. Okay, hold on. First of all, he didn't say spend any of it. No. He said throw it on the bed and jump on it. That is technically not spending any of the cash. 
I mean, you show receipts showing that you bought the stuff that you needed to get. Right. But but first. But before, the right, before all yeah, that happened. Nobody ever actually sees that money. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, why are, you, like, why are you ruining the dream? It's just like magic money that just gets put in an account and all of a sudden you can buy things with it. Why are you ruining the dream? Those, those doll- you know, somebody's got to be the voice of reason here. This is not what people want here, to do with okay? money. Okay? People <laughs> want right. to throw it on their bed and then jump on it. You you heard it here first, everyone. Uh, money doesn't exist. It's all a figment of all of our imaginations. Well, and if we just stopped pursuing then, it, then perhaps yeah, I mean, we would all be a little we get happier. All philosophical here, Cat. I do not want you on me, so please go lay down somewhere else. Sorry, my um, cats are being extremely bad t- today. I'm going to end up spraying water in all of their faces. So. So yeah. That's pretty cool, and I'm excited about that. that and awesome. in general, what we're proposing is basically um, reprogramming the cells, like harvesting these cells from rats that have a particular mutation, correcting them, growing them up, and then reintroducing them to then see if we can get them to correctly um, remyelinate these nerves and see if that like basically fixes or eliminates the progression of this disease. It's cool stuff. That that sounds, sounds awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to uh needing to needing to waste some time on the cast at some point and just taking the leash off you Matt and saying <laughs> go. <laughs> Once we here, here's One the deal. Day. Here's the deal. One, when I finally defend, we're gonna have an Olympus stream that's just me yeah. giving my my. It's gonna be fenced. Yeah, yes, no. This is we're yes. gonna record it so you can practice. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be that's... an I, it's gonna be an IRL stream. I'm gonna. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fine. I'll produce it for you. Right Un- until then, I will keep it all reined in. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're trying to kill time to wait for our Brit to show up. Ah, Will makes me very sad. Um, that's okay. Uh, can can beat him about the ears later. Uh, as for me, obviously, as you may have heard, I've been to a wedding, which was amazing, incredible. The venue was beautiful and gorgeous. Uh, even the car thing begrudgingly was cute. Um... But Devin, I still don't have pictures. I don't know when I'm supposed to. Uh, I we I literally just got an email with a Thank link you today. For that. Okay, cool. Um, because I would like to see uh all of us in our beautiful suits. Which, by the way, I have a story about that. Um, so hey, just FYI, if you're listening, any representative from Men's Warehouse, turn off the stream immediately. Um. <laughs> So here's what happens. You got to return your suit the next day. We all rented tuxes for the wedding. So you got to return your suit the next day. And I distinctly remember at 10.30 p.m. before I left the venue, I had all three lapel pins in my hand. I handed one to Adrian. I handed one to Josh. Or actually, I handed one to Lauren. I handed it to Josh. I handed one to Lauren. <laughs> and I took mine and I put it in my pants pocket. Did you, though? Listen, I drove home that night. (laughs) I am very clear on the details. Yes. So, I arrived at home, and then the next day, I woke up, and I left most of everything except for, because, like, I had taken, like, the the jacket and the the vest off, so I was basically just wearing, like, my undershirt and the pants as I was driving, because who the fuck wants to drive in a suit for two and a half hours? Um, So, I left most of the things in the car, and I... Got all the little bits and pieces out, the bow tie and the cufflinks and the tux buttons and all that stuff. And I put it all in a little baggie and I couldn't find the lapel pin. Couldn't find it. It wasn't anywhere. It wasn't in the pants. It wasn't anywhere. So what I end up suspecting happened is when I, when I got out of the car to get gas, it was in the same pocket that I usually keep my phone. I must have pulled out my phone and it fell out onto the ground. That's the only thing that I can expect because I tore this house apart. I tore my my car apart looking for it. 
So I'm stressed out because I'm like, fuck, they're going to charge me like 30 bucks for that stupid piece of shit, right? Because <laughs> that's what they do, right? They, that's yeah. that's the whole point. They charge you fucking yeah. hell of money. So I'm stressed out, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, well, okay. I might as well just bite the bullet. I was like, and I told myself, at least that's the only thing, right? Like, I had everything else. I didn't lose a cufflink. I didn't lose any buttons. I didn't lose nothing. Had everything else. So it's all in the bag. Put it all in there. I even had a little Ziploc bag that I put, like, the bow tie and the cufflinks and the buttons and all the little tiny stuff in. And I drove to a men's warehouse, and I walk in with the, the suit in my hand in its, in its original bag. And the guy says, he's like, hey, are you returning? I said, yes. He's like, okay, you can just hang it up on the rack over there, and you're good. And I was like, um, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, just, just hang it up on that rack over there, and, and then you're good to go. I was like, uh, okay. So I hung it up on the rack, and I walked out, and I was like, fuck yes. That shit did not get checked in front of me. All that shit was in there when I, when I dropped it off. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, absolutely. All that shit was in there when I dropped it off. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. And the previous story we all just heard is a work of artistic fiction. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Correct. And Correct. non-admissible in legal proceedings. Correct. You actually cannot prove that I am who I say I am, technically. <laughs> so, good luck. Um, well, I only know you as, as Jordan, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, that being said... Um, I get I, I I stop at Panda Express because I'm like I'm gonna celebrate. Let me get some Panda. So I got some Panda, which is uh, just so delicious. Um, and I how do you how do you eat your Panda like medium rare? Um, well, all first of all, all red meat is medium rare. There's there's no exceptions to that. Is Panda even red meat? I was gonna say, is that considered red meat? Who knows? I, I think I think bears. Yeah, bears are red, are red meat, meat for sure. Yeah. Are pandas even bears? Well, they're marsupials, which are also red meat, so, yes. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so I got there, I got home, and I picked up my panda off my passenger seat, and I looked down, and sitting, no, no, oh no, sitting in a little plastic baggie on my passenger seat is the bow tie. The buttons huh. and the cufflinks. And of course, then I was like, fuck! That's because. Be <laughs> right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. if only the lapel pin is missing, it easily could have been waved off. If all of the parts that are tiny are missing, it's very clear that I left them somewhere and did not return them. But I was like, I can't. Because I couldn't go back. What am I going to do? Go back, unzip the the one that's mine, shove it in there, and zip it back up, and just say deuces and walk out oh, again? Hopefully they haven't opened it yet, you mean? Dude, so I was so pissed off. So for, like, the past, what, like, week or whatever, I've been, like, checking my email. Like, I wonder when they're going to send me this email about, like, hey, we noticed some items were missing out of your bag. Um, But they haven't emailed me, so fuck them. It's been over okay. a week. Yeah. You're fine now. Yeah, I, exactly. exactly. They, they've written it off as a loss. Right, right. Which they probably do anyway, to be fair. Yeah. They probably don't give a shit. Unless, like, they actually do check it in store. I, I mean, the, the cufflinks that they give you are shit anyways. Right, right. They're, they're like $3. Right, exactly. And the bow tie, is a, it's, it's a clip-on. Like, it's not even, like, a real yeah. bow tie. So, they don't care that much. But that was my stressful, intimidating story. Um... Other than that, uh, someone sent me five pounds of sweet tarts because they want me to have a thousand cavities and never have good teeth again. And diabetes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The betis. Yeah. That's the thing that happened. So that's what I'm eating if you hear mild crunching or package opening. Why? I need sugar. Why, why would five pounds be a measurement for sweet tarts? No. I don't know. That, I have heard rumor... That seems like something you should never measure sweet tart in. I, I have heard rumor that there are larger quantities as well. Yeah, but for like candy stores, not for personal well, sale. Well. Or personal purchase. Well. There you go. It's it's downright <laughs> irresponsible. <laughs> exactly. Um, and seeing as our, our Brit has decided not to grace us with his presence today, 
uh, I will proceed into my segue, which is not great this episode because obviously we've been talking about a bunch of other stuff in the fact that welcome everyone. I'm glad you all could be here. Um, goals. We will. Um, we do need to do goals. Goals are a thing we need to do because we skipped that last time we played. I was going to say last week, but the last yeah, time we played, we did skip that. Before that. Uh, probably. Yes. That sounds right. Um, so why don't we very briefly go over who might have completed some goals? We'll start with fortune. Uh, I had retrieve and deliver all VIPs from Tan homeworld back to Westwind. Okay. We have not done that yet. No, that is not a complete. And, and that is that's the closest one I've got. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, next, certainly not least, uh, let's go with Gogo. Gogo completed any goals? Um, one is very contingent on what I locate in this tunnel. <laughs> the other again, don't be mad. Similar. Whether it's breathing or not. <laughs> Well, if you read my goal, I have a contingent <laughs> for <laughs> options here. Is it very carefully worded? Well, there's an and or <laughs> scenario. Um, um, and the other one is very similar to fortunes. So there's that last little bit we need to do. And then my third one is ongoing forever and always. So there you go. Yay. Again, I still feel as though I should perhaps be deducting experience for that every session. Shh. Because it's certainly not happening. It's continual failure. <laughs> yeah. It would not be unlike GoGo to have a continual failure goal, mm. to be fair. Yeah. But, uh, Understandable. That's okay. <laughs> um, I feel like she was set up as a child with, with unreachable goals. Yes, my whole and existence she, she just, just keeps with it. hinges on that aspect of her personality. But anyway. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, Oscar. Uh, extract crew and rescuees. Perfect. I believe we did that. You did indeed complete that with minimal casualties. It almost got messed up there for a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, when people started turning into fucking water balloons, but we're fine. Oh, I meant that time that Dr. Fisher died. Um... <laughs> no, he I could just have carried out if it came down to it. The, yeah. the real problem was the the multiplying... Never mind. <laughs> that. Amelia. Uh-huh. Uh, excellent. So, having had that for only one session, it's not going to be a distance one, but... It is. It wasn't particularly easy. I don't feel it was, it was executed to the letter uh, and was not easy. Uh, so I think that you deserve uh, a solid 500 experience for that one. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. Uh, and that is being replaced with uh, locate Gogo's dad. Okay, fantastic. You sure you don't want to put remains of Gogo's dead? Wow, okay, you know. <laughs> or we could stay positive. I said what I meant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he makes well, fair I point. Mean, and, and just because he's dead doesn't mean you can't talk to him. I mean, look at... <laughs> yeah, if he's dead, we can fix him, right? That's, no, we've no learned words. this. <laughs> Why stop at two zombies? <laughs> <laughs> we really kind of broke the seal already. Like, you know, yeah, fuck I mean, it. I mean, the... what's, what's one more <laughs> zombie? Shit's on fucked. Might as well do it right. Pandora's box has already been opened. It's just the yeah. Just we the like we totally we totally already crossed that threshold and. Mm -hmm. We took the plunge on the zombies, and uh, we may as well just run with it. Yeah, no, I agree completely. <laughs> I, I see no repercussions. Yeah, no, this seems great. This is actually the whole point of everything. <laughs> this, this, this isn't a Stars Without Numbers game. It's a zombie game. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was actually uh, The Walking Dead 
32 64 stars and zombies with yeah, that number. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the Walking Dead, 3264. So... Scream was just the first zombie apocalypse. Right, ex exactly. It actually had nothing to do with artificial intelligence. It's actually just zombies. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, I don't know about Dr. Fisher, but it doesn't matter, because he's a bum, so... <laughs> Can I play Fisher this session? Can I play Fisher this session? Can I play? No, I don't want to play Fisher. I actually nominate Meg. Yes! Remember that one time I played Fisher? I nominate it was Chan. Great. I, I was actually, uh, I'm, I was, I'm with Devin. I'm going to nominate Chan to control Fisher this session. <laughs> so... <laughs> only, only if you role play that as you would have to. That's, yeah. that's what I want to see. Fair. Like I in, want, I want in... Chan in roll 20 controlling Fisher. well yeah so okay yeah absolutely i can change the name on my my rollable sheet to make it so that it looks like chan is rolling um yeah, that's great okay so the other the other issue um i don't know if issue is the word for it it's probably an issue uh is the fact that we were here last time it's a sm small issue uh um, i mean big, well they're big quite large issue. to be fair yeah, they're, that's they're what I said. Quite massive entities. Um, but there were some giant uh worms with a U that were uh not a Y. Not a Y and not an O, but a U. Um that were causing you no amount of no no small amount of grief. It seems that you had disturbed their their hibernation or feeding or whatever that they were currently doing. Uh, and upon, like, the cacophony that had been created from the one, it seemed to kind of draw the others in the local vicinity to your location as well. Uh, so just to give everybody a, a brief reminder of what's going By on. By others, you mean other. No, no, there's definitely two others besides the one that's right in front of you, Fortune. I was unaware of the third. Uh, so, just as a reminder, I'm going to move you just a little bit, Fortune, so you can see where this, where this thing approximately is. It's right okay. approximately there. Um, I think you can still oh, kind of see it from right that there. One? Yep, yep. So that's the one that Oscar had uh, sliced open gravely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the reason why you probably don't know about the third is because that was the final scene. The final scene of last session was as Oscar's up on the hill uh, crawling through this hollowed out bridge thing right here and then emerging from the other side of it is, is the, th the third giant worm that turns and addresses Oscar's small petite figure. There's also another one over here somewhere, right? Yeah, and there's also another one over here that Right in this area, right here, oh. that uh, that Chan and Gogo and Doctor Fisher were handling. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm currently aiming at. Cool, got it. Yes, yeah, you were aiming at the far one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, handling. So it's fine. Um. So before we before we jump right into the action, um, I want to also give a brief overview for those who may not be aware, may not be caught up. Is the reason you all are here. Uh, is because when traveling through the system, um, Gogo received a communication from her estranged father, uh, who appeared to be in some distress, appeared to be trying to leave like a like a final message for her, um, because he was apparently trapped on the on the planet uh, and was losing life support systems which is really important on this planet because it's completely toxic. Uh, it will kill you in a matter of minutes without proper life support systems. Um, or at least do lasting damage. Uh, so, Gogo decided that since the opportunity would obviously not present itself at any other point in time, that the attempt needed to be made. So, flying to the planet as fast as your little poor little ship would take you um you ended up roping in the rest of the crew to help you search the the surface of the planet 
and that's when we had uh gotten to this area called uh the the devil's bend right and or is the devil's bank it was the bend right uh bend sounds correct yeah ben sounds correct um but for ben bank it's full of worms right so bad let's just say it's, it's all it's, bad it's, <laughs> yeah the first thing that occurred is dr fisher the got important word in there is devils we're, we're, we're <laughs> up worm creek without a pedal so yeah we have the wrong word here <laughs> dr dr fisher had been assaulted by these weird little like fish with legs that had pierced his suit uh temporarily causing him some Which distress definitely not murlocs definitely not murlocs correct that would legally be legally distinct right that would be proprietary uh no affiliation with blizzard yeah, entertainment no it's, it's, it's murlocs with a y <laughs> yeah perfect uh just like Mur it's just like, like it's frankincense and murlocs yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for christmas yeah <laughs> exactly is this our christmas episode yeah there you go <laughs> no we're totally having a christmas episode Um, Holy shit. <laughs> so, uh this is kind of like pod racing is P A W D, right? It's yeah. it's pod with an A W. Oh yeah. my god. Um, <laughs> we're, we're still gonna get sued. <laughs> no, it's fine. They can't they can't do anything. I haven't used their images or anything like that, they'll be fine. Yeah. Um So uh your attempt or your research had led you to believe that this might be the area and the primary thing that was here were these like glowing almost um i'm gonna call them this this is not what they are but this is to describe to everyone what they look like um like large egg shaped like crystals or you know catalysts or something some sort of geometric formation um no get down goodbye um that were reported to be like extremely valuable and they only kind of exist in this area of of the planet uh and so because it is so dangerous out here see previous worms uh not a lot of you know adventurers or miners or you know, people who are looking to make a buck get salvagers get out here very much. Um, however, uh, recalling back, there was at some point a an offer of a job from your father, uh, which was turned down, and he stated that he would have to do it himself. And now he's in this predicament, so we could reasonably assumed that this is kind of one thing led to another, and these are the consequences of you know <laughs> sending your father out here all by himself um definitely yeah, just, no guilt just involved. keep rubbing, rubbing it in yeah mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. hold on hold i said don't get mad that automatically clears me from anything that's about to no, occur no no i i don't absolve that's true no yeah see i it's it's three against one absolve <sighs> this is when i hate being the only girl no i think that it's just because you're the only one that really cares about him uh and the other two know they have giant worms that I can eat them with. Well, out of I everyone feel, here today, yeah. the only people that have met your father is you. Well, we we were not really chance. afforded an opportunity to care Jim about this person. Good, good point. Good point. But you care about me, right? So then you care about my father. We're I here. I mean, they're I here, say. aren't they? Right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say, Matt. They're here. Yeah. They they are engaged. Like, do you with, not see what we're doing right now for you? <laughs> they're engaged with twenty foot tall worms currently. Uh, so so there's that at least. Obviously, Chan and Fisher care about you more though, because they're actually with you. If Fisher cared about me, he'd be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bring it all the way back around to the will joke. It's a I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like I like the the roundabout will burn. Um, <laughs> that, uh, that makes me happy. So, yes, the goal was to at least arrive in time to save may not be the right word, but to limit damages to uh, your father. Um, because people have been known to survive for quite a long time on the, on the, 
the outside. But they're never, like, they're probably going to have to get lungs replaced and a shitload of skin grafts and yeah it's just it's just nasty kind of all around um but you know we'll see what happens uh so i think that that probably is a a good conclusion to the introduction to show us what time it is so does we'll get experience deducted at the end of the session or are we just uh, kind of punish him in other ways we'll see here's the here's the trick um will has never actually gained experience ever uh he's actually still at the same level uh <laughs> he just doesn't know it i just don't count his his other things that happen i just <laughs> arbitrarily increase the difficulty uh of things that he does so so it's already taken care of <laughs> uh man if will goes back and watches this episode he's gonna be upset he doesn't love me he doesn't watch my stuff oh yeah um so it appears that since we ended on the end of the turn order which this would be the the worm that is on number five just in case you were curious matt that's why you got to see it next um and then these two obviously are the ones that are about to take their turns but not before the savior of all saviors chan banaheth indeed deceased that was can a, we you know can we get rid of that please you can <laughs> you can take plus one experience for your inflection being on point yay <laughs> what I, I'll, I'll <laughs> bullshit <laughs> um to be fair it is changed every like, little bit helps his uh his character sheet has been changed for a while i don't know why yeah i don't know why it's always just in it the still turn order shows up on the turn order. oh you know what because that's his hold on hold on i know why oh it's his token, token. Yeah. yeah yeah get rid of it on his token yeah yeah i mean but he Indeed. is though just in case <laughs> we don't just you know all right he's shooting at it with his laser rifle the that one way. that's to the north of you, correct? The one yeah. that we've been shooting. Yeah, it's at, right here. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. The one that we can like sort of barely see until. It's... Yeah, you can see like the upper half of its body, right? That's kind of like sliding towards you. At this point. I don't. <clears throat> Excuse me. Recall what AC is. Like. They have AC of six. They're giant. They're pretty easy to hit. Mostly their AC is consisted of how how thick their height is, right? Not not yeah. how hard it is to hit them. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, Haribo. I will lock you in the dryer. Oh, uh, missed. Missed. Oh, God, my chair died. Okay, we're good. Why don't, why don't you use the, the burst function? Um, I forgot about it. <laughs> okay. You should unforget. Yeah, it helps. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if it would have helped on a four. I was going to no, say, she hit. oh, yeah, I she would have hit. hit. Yeah. yeah. It would have been that plus two. Yeah. Next time. So, Matt, I'll remind you, you're still technically right here. In fact, you had just gotten to, like, the very tip edge. So so if we do... In fact... Oh, wait. I have a great idea. Oh, wait. What are, what are you doing to me? I see a worm. I don't see a worm. I see a worm. I don't see a worm. That that might actually be representative of what he's doing right now. Just uh, uh, what do I do? I'm trying. I'm trying to make it so that you're okay. Yeah, I know you're trying to get my sword vision. Yeah, your sword has vision now, so you should be able to see see the other one. Whatever. Uh, I I accept. (laughs) So valiant effort. Um, thank you. This one up here, it so remember these things don't have like eyes; they don't detect as we do. Um, so uh, I'm actually gonna roll a perception check for this thing to even. S- oh, sorry, for this thing, because you've teleported. Um, I'm gonna see if it can register like, basically the the move like the stomping of your feet and movement. Um, 
So, uh, can you, even if you're not trying, I just want to see where the baseline is. Um, can you roll me a stealth check with dexterity? And fortune, I also want you to roll me a stealth check. Yep. With dexterity. I want to see where the baseline is, just so I know what what I'm looking at here when I'm when I'm rolling for. Okay, not bad, not bad. Sol solid passes. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, right. I made this thing a while ago because I intended you guys to be here far earlier. Um. Meg. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Wisdom. Okay. So, uh, Oscar, it still, it still recognizes where you are. Fortune, he sees always win ties. Yeah. So, luckily, you're, you're like, uh, like the shock wave from your rifle going off. Or, you haven't actually shot it yet, you're just aiming I at it. I haven't right? yet. Yeah, so that's why it doesn't know where you are. You're, you're actually being quiet. Uh, Oscar, on the other hand, it does turn its attention towards you. Mm. And, uh, is going to... Basically, it, it tries to drill its face with all of its giant pincers into you, uh, and then, like, you know, in turn into the, uh, the ground where you're at. It tries to, let's say, grind you against the ground. Um, so, do this. What is your AC, kind sir? Uh, a one. I'm assuming... The, holy fuck! Oh goodness! Are we are we factoring shield into this? If we did, or... it would still be a twenty. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just. just yeah. Saying. No, I mean, this is. I'll let you decide whether or not your shield can help you against this thing's attack. I'm I'm going with probably no, but I mean, maybe you can use it to like wedge it in there. So maybe there's an argument for it. So, um, but then you might lose a shield. Right, yeah, then I can argue, like, if it hits you, it you might... Whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I still hit with a 22 no matter what, though, so... That's okay, because he has more at his disposal, and he's going to try and, like, mm -hmm. super saiyan push this guy. So... Yeah. It doesn't... It doesn't... Oh, so you're going to try and deflect and make him roll again? Oh, oh yeah. He's, okay. he's going to try and, like, weasel yeah. out of the path using his telekinesis. Absolutely. So he's he's like trying to just push. Yay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so, so so as like it comes down mm -hmm. and then kind of like he he barely shifts to the side of this thing as yeah. it smashes in. So it it smashes into the ground like below. Like it it probably like because you're standing on the top of the cliff, right? So it like yeah. enters into the cliff like below you. Um, it like is coming towards you, and then you like smash its face downward, basically. So and it so starts. Fortune probably thinks I'm dead. Right? Yeah. There's just the yeah. there's just dust <laughs> flying up, right? Um, but so this thing obviously is a burrowing creature. So mm. as it does that, it also is going to begin to burrow underneath of you. And can you roll me a luck save, Oscar? <sighs> Yep. The ground holds firm beneath your feet. Yay. Um, so let me just measure. Fortunate if you could just shoot this thing, that would be swell. Well, I am trying to shoot the other one at the moment. So um so it's it's underground, Oscar. You can still see here, let me move it out just a little bit so you can actually see. You can still see like the like the back third of it, but it's like burrowing oh, yeah. into the into the, the ground now. Don't worry, I'm going to try and stab it in the butt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, this other creature, you can't see yet, but uh, you probably will be able to this turn. It begins sliding rapidly towards the group of you that is here. And when it gets to about there, you should be able to see it now there. Go, go. Uh, yes. Cool. So when it gets to there, uh, using half of its movement so far, uh, it's going to try and sense where the group of you are. So can you and Chan both roll a stealth check? And we'll roll one for Dr. Fit. Man, 
Now, I am going to give it a plus one on its, on its uh, perception, though, because you've been shooting at it, and reasonably it could understand where this burning is coming from and head in that direction. Stealth is from... Dexterity. Okay. Oh, Dr. Fisher's good at these. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, which one is Chan and which one is Coco? Um, the first one's me, the second one's Chan. I think I'm going to re-roll mine with my minute left. Mm, that sounds like a good idea. It does. Hey. Hell yeah. Way better. A good re-roll. So I stealthy. Re -roll. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It knows exactly oh, where you guys are. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> what the fuck? It is Stop frosty it. right now. Well, I mean, you haven't shooting at it, so... So... Listen, I rolled a 10 with a minus 1. Hey, <laughs> uh... Maybe, okay. maybe Fisher actually wants to re-roll that, just for shits and giggles. Well, wiggles. Fisher's further away than the rest of them, so he's can, reasonably can he not going to get, get attacked. Can get 13? Uh, no, he cannot. Okay, then the re-roll does nothing. No, he could. He can get a 12. That is the max. Or, no, I'm sorry, he can get 11. 11 is the maximum he can roll on the stealth check. Uh, yeah, so he gets so over to here. Um, now, he's pinned. it's essentially what's going to happen. Right, yeah. So essentially what's going to happen here is Gogo, it's attacking at you and Chan. But you and Chan are standing right next to each other. So do me a favor. Roll a luck save for both you and Chan. Does this determine who it hits? Possibly. Because, because I would what? say that Gogo would try to let it hit her and not Chan. Do you like shove Chan out of the way? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So um, I, if that's what it's for, I don't want to roll. Okay. Then I think in that instance, um, you 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 can absolutely do that. You can use your reaction or whatever to like knock Chan to the side a little bit, right? And the creature comes down. Like you do that thing where like you shove him, and then all of a sudden you're in the direct path of this thing. Mm -hmm. Um. And it will strike. What is your AC? Five. Oh. <laughs> so, you shove Chain out of the way, and then you roll, and it just strikes the ground in front of you. However, I now do need you to roll me a luck save. Because you need to see if the ground you rolled onto is firm. Chan is fine because you pushed him out of the way. I won't. I won't force him on it. He's kind of over here now. And Doctor Fisher, ooh, it's gonna hurt. Doctor Fisher is gonna roll okay, so a dexterity thing, saving throw. Yeah. Okay. Or evasion, I should. Jesus, Doctor Fisher is a ten in these. Wow. Holy crap. So. <laughs> <laughs> here's what happens will is still or fisher rather is still very distracted by like the the teeth that are sunk in his arm and like yeah so the first number is for you go go and the second number is for dr fisher and this is basically fall damage right it's essentially what this is um so the first one's for gogo second one's for dr fisher and for him it's rocks falling onto him right it's me falling from the height okay good Ooh. eight eight it's great let's we'll take eight damage so um it's not like you are buried under rubble at this point but you're kind of you kind of like you probably land on your shoulder or something uh and you could feel it kind of pop a little bit but here's the deal the creature is just like Again, the creature is blind. It's basing its its all of its senses on other things. Um, so that that probably constitutes the fact that it doesn't doesn't really have tracking on you anymore because there was a very loud rumbling and grinding <laughs> sound that just mm -hmm. occurred uh, mm -hmm. that influenced its its um, uh, its senses. So it'll probably have to perceive you next turn. But it is your turn. You're. Um, <sighs> 
I would say you're you're probably prone. If you, actually, you, okay. I, I, sh- I should give you a roll. Um, roll me an athletics check uh, with dexterity or strength, depending on which one you think is more appropriate. Probably dexterity makes sense. Dex, more sense because anyway. I'm go go. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if you are prone and have to have to use movement. I think maybe just a just like a seven. Yeah, cool. So yeah, so you you Superman land uh, or superhero landing. Hell yeah. Uh, but in, in like in doing so your shoulder gets jarred right like that's kind of mm-hmm. that's how it works uh but you have your full movement this turn your full 10 meter movement or whatever and remember there's no attacks of opportunity in this game um and as this creature is kind of like flailing about and kind of like you can hear the grinding of its of its maw um and i'll remind you that this brown this brown line is the, is line. the, it's the yeah. base mm-hmm. of the cliff Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Um. I'm injured. Would I? I mean, I know I'm not prone, so I guess that doesn't matter, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I could conceivably climb up here as my turn. If yeah, I to. you you like could begin up. climbing. Yeah. So it's difficult terrain to climb. Um, and just a basic athletics check with, uh, with dexterity again, just to make sure that you're. So I'd want to move there. Mm-hmm. I think that's enough, even with it. Yeah terrain and then i'll see yeah as long as you basically don't fail it as long as you get six or higher you can climb it's pretty easy to climb these rocks oh holy yeah, shit you can... it. <laughs> yeah so it's not that you fall it's that like you just can't get anywhere right like you, you just like you're gripping on the handholds and are just crumbling under your grip um you can't find any footing and you're just kind of scrabbling at the at the wall there for a little bit but you still have your action so you can still do a thing you're just not up on top yet so I guess I'm there. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- think 